everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily and today I have my May TBR. I am so excited for spring. There is so much exciting stuff coming up in the next couple of months that I just absolutely cannot wait for and I'm just feeling really energized. I've had some really good reading months and so I'm excited for May. I have a pretty hefty TBR this month and a couple challenges that I'm working to complete that I am setting for myself. So first let's talk about the challenges. Number one, Adam and I are going to Europe in June and I'm super excited. I, oh my gosh, I've never been before and I just cannot wait for the trip and the food and the sights and all the old buildings and whatever. But to get even more pumped, as if I'm not already excited enough, I wanted to read one book from every country that we're going to be visiting. Second, at the end of the month, there is a week-long readathon happening called Sabathon, which is amazing. This is basically a way to read a bunch of books that will make you emotional, crying, tears. I love a book that makes me cry, and I'm excited to participate in this. My sister is graduating from Boston College this month, so of course I'm flying out to be there and to visit her and then I'm gonna have some time home uh, in Maine where I grew up as well um, doing some wedding planning stuff which is super exciting and seeing some of my family and my best friend from home so it's gonna be a crazy amazing long weekend and then the Sabathon begins the day that we fly back from Maine I believe so perfect time uh, to get started on the plane ride so anyway I'm rambling let's get into the TBR so I'm gonna go through my European challenge books first and we're gonna go in the order of the cities that we will be in so first up I have burial rides by Hannah Kent this takes place in Reykjavik Iceland this book is inspired by true life events takes place in like the early 1800s and follows the final days of a woman who has been sentenced to death. She's been convicted of murdering her former master and while she's awaiting execution she is sent to a rural farm to wait out her days. Naturally the people who live there are a little uneasy about having a convicted murderer living with them and at the beginning just sort of avoid her but they come to learn more about her and her story as she lives with them. It's one that I have read really amazing things about and I've never read a book that takes place in Iceland and I'm excited to see how this one goes. Our flight technically is to Paris so the next book that I'll be reading is All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr. This is a historical fiction story following two main characters, one who originally lives in Paris and the other who is from Germany. Marie Laure, the young girl who lives in Paris, is fleeing the city with her father after the Nazis invade France. The other story is of a young boy named Werner who grew up as an orphan in small town mining colony of Germany and he's always been fascinated by machinery and he has this radio that he's grown up with or something to that effect and so he's enlisted to try to help um, with the like mechanical side of the war and track down the rebels and at some point the two stories converge and we go from there. Definitely going to be a tearjerker from what Adam has told me um, but one that I have been putting off and I'm really really looking forward to getting to this one this month. Next we will be traveling by train up to Amsterdam so for that I am reading The Miniaturist by Jessie Burton. This is the story of a young woman who moves to Amsterdam to live with her new husband but she is leading a pretty lonely life after she gets there. She doesn't really have any friends or anyone she knows other than her husband and his sister who lives with them. In an effort to cheer her up and lift her spirits, her husband buys her a miniature replica of their home and she then hires the services of a miniaturist to recreate the different pieces of furniture and details of their home. It's a magical realism book so at some point I believe she is able to sort of learn secrets about their home and gain some knowledge about her new family or something to that effect and it sounds really interesting. I don't think I've read very many magical realism books, a couple that come to mind, but it's definitely a genre that really intrigues me so that was one of the reasons that I definitely wanted to put this one on my list. 
And finally, we are going to be traveling to Bruges, Belgium. And I couldn't find a book that took place in Bruges that I was super interested in. So this one takes place in Brussels, but close enough. The Lady and the Unicorn by Tracy Chevalier. I just mentioned this book in my free books haul video that I posted last week, but this is by the author of Girl with a Pearl Earring, and it's another mostly fictional account of the inspiration behind a piece of artwork. This one is about a set of tapestries that now live in Paris and depict women who are seducing unicorns or something to that effect. I forget exactly what. This is telling the story of the artist who is hired to craft the like idea of this tapestry and then it follows the man who is actually weaving the tapestries. <laughs> the summary makes it sound... Um, pretty interesting. It says the weaver is risking everything to complete this work and everyone's lives are changed after it's completed. So that's pretty interesting. I'm intrigued by this. My mom has read both Girl with a Pearl Earring and The Lady and the Unicorn. Um, liked both of them and I'm definitely going to pick up Girl with a Pearl Earring afterwards. I could have used it as my Amsterdam book but I've already read it and I'm going to wait and save that for a reread later on in the year. Okay, and next for the Sabathon reads, I was actually just watching Jocelyn's video of her May TBR over at Yogi with a Book, and she mentioned that May is Asian and Pacific Islander Heritage Month in the U.S., and so she is only reading books by AAPI authors during the month of May, which I think is amazing and something I wanted to incorporate into my own TBR. I had already planned out my European challenge books a couple weeks ago and it's been something that I have wanted to challenge myself to for a while now. So I decided not to change any of those reads, which I feel a little conflicted about, but I wanted to be sure to uh, incorporate it into my Sabathon choices. So all five of the books are by AAPI authors. So thank you to Jocelyn for that inspiration and let's get into the five challenges. So challenge number one is to read a book that you've been putting off because you know what it will make you too emotional. For this, I chose A Thousand Splendid Sons by Khaled Hosseini. This is a book by the author of The Kite Runner, which if you have read that or seen the movie, you know it's very emotional. I was definitely weeping throughout reading it. It's an amazing book and I really enjoyed reading it and I imagine this will be the same. This takes place in Afghanistan over the course of 30 years, including the years of the Soviet invasion as well as the reign of the Taliban. And I believe it looks at different families or different generations and their interaction with what their country looks like and that sort of thing. I don't know a ton about it, clearly, but it's one of those books I just kind of want to absorb as I go. I I'm finally going to check this off my 2018 bucket list and stop putting it off because I know I'll be so happy I read it once I finally complete it. Challenge number two is a book that will make you cry from happiness. I wanted to incorporate an audiobook into my Sabathon choices just because I feel like that's a good way to go about readathons, have something you can listen to while you're doing other mindless tasks. So for this one, I chose When Dimple Met Rishi by Sandhya Menon. This is the story of two young Indian American students who I believe recently graduated from college and are both off to a coding camp. Dimple is very against the idea of the traditional arranged marriage that happens in her culture and is excited to get out of her parents' house for a summer and be a little bit on her own and is not thinking about boys or marriage or anything like that whatsoever. On the flip side, Rishi is a hopeless romantic and he really believes in the tradition of arranged marriages and think there's a lot of value there and he knows that his parents and Dimple's parents are hoping that they will meet and fall in love and get married it's like a pseudo arranged marriage he's aware of it Dimple is not and so it's sort of a love story I've heard it's funny and I don't know if it'll actually make me cry from happiness because I don't typically tend to cry from happiness in books I don't unless it's like I'm laughing so hard I'm crying but it's one that I think will make me you know emotionally like touched and makes me feel good, that sort of thing. So that one is one that I am really, really excited to read. Next up is reread a book that emotionally destroyed you. Emotionally destroyed is maybe a bit of an exaggeration, but I chose The Joy Luck Club by Amy Tan. I did start a reread of this back in March and just didn't ever make my way through it, but I read it in high school and it is a pretty emotional tale of mothers and daughters and learning family secrets and trying to understand the other and just get a better sense of what your mom is all about, what your daughter's all about, that sort of thing. And that kind of storyline makes me really emotional for whatever reason. I'm excited to have an excuse to pick this one up again 
and I think I'll probably start where I left off back in March. Challenge number four is to read a book under 300 pages, and for this I have chosen The Association of Small Bombs by Karan Mahajan. This is the story of two Delhi brothers who one day go to pick up their family's TV set after being repaired, and their friend comes along, and while they're there, a bomb goes off, and the two brothers are killed. Their friend, Mansoor, survives, and has to live with this guilt and the emotional and physical trauma of um, surviving a um, de the detonation of a bomb. And I believe it sort of follows his life as a young boy, but then also as he goes to college in America and then returns to Delhi afterwards. And there are some subplots within it as well. I don't know that much about it, but one of my friends recommended it as a book that totally destroyed her, so I imagine that I will be crying at it. And it's about 288 pages. And challenge number five is to read the group book. The pick for this is The Astonishing Color of After by Emily XR Pan. This is one that has been taking the book world by storm, and it sounds incredible, very emotional, a lot of people cry pretty hard <laughs> while reading it. It's a story of our main character, Lee, whose mother recently committed suicide. After her mother's death, she travels to Taiwan to meet her grandparents for the first time, her mother's parents, and Lee is convinced that after her mother's death, her mother turned into a bird, and she's going to Taiwan to find it. While she's looking for this bird, and as she's exploring uh, Taiwan for the first time, she learns family secrets, and she you know, creates a new relationship with her grandparents, and just sounds very emotional, a very um, heart-wrenching story of you know, loss and acceptance and all of that. Emily XR Pan tweeted the other day that it was only $2.99 for the next like week, and so obviously I snatched that up immediately and perfect timing for a Sabathon. All right, that is everything for this video. That is my lengthy TBR for the month of May, but one that I'm feeling super duper excited about. If you wanna keep the conversation going, please leave a comment down below, or you can find all of the links to my social media accounts in the description box, so follow me there. If you like this video and you wanna see more, subscribe to this channel so you know when the next one goes up. But until then, happy reading, bye.